So welcome to another episode of Autogefühl with me, AJ. Here you see the Seat Ateca. Now, we're no stranger to this car. We've done several in-depth reviews. We've even covered uh, the world premiere event and showcased the technology and the special edition Seat Ateca experience at the Paris Auto Show. So make sure you go back and watch all those videos first to get a holistic idea of how this car really performs. But here today, we're gonna test this car in the snow to see how it behaves and how it performs. And in order to do that, I've come here to the mountains in Austria. So are you interested? Let's find out more. Come on, let's go. So the Seat Ateca basically has a Haldex-based all-wheel drive system. For those of you who don't know, a Haldex all-wheel drive system is an electronically operated clutch. Now in a standard 4x4, you have the engine mounted longitudinally, which means that you would have to have a longer bonnet, plus you would have to have a transfer case, and because of the transfer case, the body generally, generally has to be a bit higher. In fact, most of the traditional uh, 4x4s have a ladder frame chassis with the body on top. So, longitudinal engine, transfer case, propeller shafts, locking differentials. That's the standard 4x4. But, in a Haldex all-wheel drive system, it's just a, basically a plug-and-play kind of a four-wheel drive. It takes the same pre-existing a uh, uh, front wheel drive transverse mounted engine layout but it just adds a propeller shaft and a rear differential. Now between the rear differential and the propeller shaft there is basically the electronic clutch. This electronic clutch uses the same uh, data from the ECU of the ABS, the traction control and the hydraulic modulator. So when it senses that the front wheels are slipping the electronic clutch engages and then the power is also transmitted to the rear wheels, thus becoming all-wheel drive. Now this system is much more efficient, it's completely auto automatic, the user doesn't have to worry about changing to high uh, 2 or low 4 or any of the uh, things like that. In fact, like the one we have, we have a 7-speed DSG, so everything is completely automatic. So you have the efficiency of a front-wheel drive system, the compact design, plus there is no need to re-engineer anything to have a four-wheel drive version of a standard front-wheel drive car. So that's, that's basically what this car has. And let's face it, 90% of the time, 90 people will basically use these cars on normal roads. And only 10% of the time would you really need to use it off-road. And when you do need to use it off-road, it's totally capable, as you will soon see. But first, let's take this car out on the highway and see how it does there. So one of the reasons why the Ateca is such a good car and it's doing so well is because of its road manners. And excuse me when I say car, it's an SUV, but that's the point. You can be easily mistaken because it drives just like a car. More so because it's based on the Volkswagen MQB platform. But alongside with the car-like dynamics, you also get the benefits of, it, uh, of an SUV. So it has a higher ground clearance, it has a high seating position, uh, the dashboard is quite low, the window line is also quite low. So you have a very airy and bright spacious interior. Also, SUVs have better utilization of vertical space compared to a regular car. Because in a car, generally, you have a lower roof line, your seating uh, position is also a little bit lower, and hence, let's say, uh, your driving seat is a little bit behind and you're further away from the windshield, which means there's also less uh, room in the back. Whereas an SUV, it has a taller body and you're seating closer to the steering wheel and to the dashboard. And that, you know, makes it a lot more spacious inside and it gives you good visibility out the back as well. So again, we're not, uh, there's, we're no stranger to the Seat Ateca. We've been uh, you're driving this car for quite some time. So I'm just going to quickly uh, reiterate some of the key points. For example, the steering is really good. It has a, a light feeling when you're in the city and you're trying to maneuver in uh, tight spaces, but it weighs up, uh, up 
quite nicely at higher speeds on the highway. Also, the uh, visibility out the side is really good and if you uh, want you can also spec a lot of safety features like the blind, uh, blind spot detectors, rear view camera, 360 degree camera, a whole range of uh, things like that. For example also uh, radar controlled uh, adaptive cruise control, a whole host of features. The ride is also really comfortable. The suspension is a little bit stiff but that aids in its handling and you can hear the navigation perhaps, has a really good navigation system and uh, the cabin is also quite, uh, quite quiet, it's really well insulated. So you just feel like this car is a really good uh, premium car even though it's quite an affordable car. We're driving the 2 liter TDI, uh, made it to a 7 speed DSG with the four wheel drive and uh, this engine makes about 190 horsepower so it has plenty of torque low down in the rev range and it's really refined and can barely hear it through the uh, it, there's very noise uh, very little noise that intrudes into the cabin so overall it's you're really left with not much uh, uh, left that you want it has everything covered also, if you have the DSG, you also get paddle shifters, so you get better control over the uh, gear selection. So, we're heading over to the snow test track, and let's see how it behaves off-road. Okay, so now we're on some twisty mountain roads. Let's put it in sports mode, drop down a couple gears. Yeah, and again, I cannot stress this enough, this car really handles so well for an SUV. You really forget that it's an SUV. It lets you enjoy the glorious views without having to be worried about body roll or grip and the four-wheel drive system is also there to help you out. Again, you're really left with not much else to want. So here we are on the off-road snow test track in the Sierra Teca. So, well, when you're driving off a uh, road in the snow, it's always important to first of all make sure you have a good uh, seating position. Uh, make sure your seat is a little bit higher than what you're used to so that you have a good view out forward and you can see uh, you know the road ahead because what happens sometimes on narrow roads like this is that the snow fills up all the potholes and all the the ditches and the gutters on the edges of the road and you cannot really distinguish you know where the road ends and where the uh, the track begins so it's always important to sit uh, at a higher position and in the Ateca we have the uh, snow mode so obviously this is very important to have as well so the snow mode, uh, driving mode, uh, first of all, dulls the throttle response. So, you know, you don't have uh, the wheels spinning unnecessarily or accidentally. So the throttle response is dull, so you have more control over the amount of power that you're delivering. And then the steering wheel is also light, so it's easy to make quick corrections. It doesn't take too much effort. It's very light. The four-wheel drive system is always on, so you have good traction. And furthermore, the traction control and the ABS, uh, the program, is tuned to handle extremely slippery uh, surfaces. So it gives you more time to relax and enjoy this beautiful view here in the Austrian Alps.
So we've already seen the exterior of the Ateca, so I'm not going to repeat that here, but here we have 19-inch uh, wheels with black and metal color finishing. Uh, the Ateca also has a much more proportional SUV stance. It looks wider. It has squared wheel arches with black cladding compared to, say, other rivals like the Ford Kuga, which is more rounded and more almost a, uh, you know, an MPV style car. This has a much more square, boxy shape. It's about 4.3 meters long. So within the Volkswagen range, uh, the Seat Ateca is, uh, is right in the middle. Uh, it shares uh, most of its platform with the Tiguan and the upcoming Škoda Yeti. And uh, larger than this would be the Škoda Kodiak and the new Tiguan Altspace. And then even larger than this would be the Volkswagen Atlas. Later this year, Seat is also going to release a brand new car. It's going to be based on the Ibiza and it's going to be co uh, called the Arona. And it's going to be a bit smaller than this as well. Uh, apart from that, I mean, this is a very tried and tested design that Seat has been following across its uh, models, including the Leon. And overall, I think everybody has something positive to say about this. So let's briefly take a look at the interior. So the steering wheel has a lot of uh, functions on it for navigating through the menu on the screen in front of the dashboard. You have a tachometer and a speedometer, both analog. And in the middle, you have a screen, which gives you a lot of useful information about your assistance systems, navigation, your audio, telephone, the vehicle status, and driving data. With this car, we've been averaging about eight liters for 100 kilometers, but then again, we've been doing a lot of uh, drifting and uh, things like that. So it gives pretty good mileage, especially with the lower power diesel engines. And uh, let's move to the side. Here we have the 8-inch touchscreen. It has full link. And again, we've seen this before, and you can watch our video where we have discussed and showcased this technology in depth. But basically, it, through mirror link, you can connect your phone through Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It has a really good navigation system. You can zoom it in and out using the knob on the left, so it makes it a lot easier. It has really good touch sensitivity and response. And moving down, you have uh, your hazard light buttons, the power tailgate, auto shut off, and the climate control, all standard things. You have two USB ports, a 12 volt socket, an inductive, uh, inductive phone charging port. And then down here, you have the seven speed DSG. Again, this has four drive, it has the uh, badging for the four-wheel drive and again uh, like I mentioned uh, the this is basically a Haldex based four-wheel drive each company has its own label or brand or tag but essentially they're all the same thing and uh, further down you have the electronic parking brake and then finally this is the important part of this today's event is the drive selector mode we have eco normal sport individual off-road and snow mode. Now for off-road and snow mode, this car also gets hill descent control. So as you can see here, the off-road information, it gives you the tire angle, the departure angle, and a whole bunch of useful information and the hill descent control symbol. So here in the back seat, there's plenty of space as you can see. I have this seat set to my driving position. I'm five foot eight. That's about 1.7 meters. Although, because of the snow driving, I've had it closer and higher. But then again, I mean, there's so much leg room. In fact, I'll run out of leg before I run out of room. And I can put my feet underneath the seats as well. Speaking about the seats, they're Alcantara and uh, fabric with faux leather on the edges. So eco-friendly and okay with us here in Autocafuel. You have rear air conditioning vents and you can shut them on and off small pouches in the seat, seat backs, a really nice panoramic sunroof, and a really decently sized uh, trunk as well. So I'm here with Jordi, the brand ambassador for Seat, as well as Seat Sport uh, test driver. So thank you so much for being with us. So can you give us some tips about how to drive the Seat Ateca in the snow if we want to drive slow and safely? Well, first of all, I think it's important to be comfortable 
to get a good position so we reach the steering wheel and the pedals in an appropriate manner. Drive with uh, appropriate clothing as well so we can have movements uh, with very natural uh, fluid uh, movements. Then Think in mind that uh, in the snow or in very slippery conditions, we have different programs on the on the ECU that the car will help us in our safe uh, driving. And on top of that, we obviously can uh, affect a lot if we are smooth, if we press the pedals gently, if we don't do any uh, aggressive movement. This plus the good uh, controls of the of the car plus the good position, I think, is the best three tips if you want to drive safe and uh, quiet at home. That's great. And what about if we want to drive like that, what we see behind us? How do we drift in the snow and effectively hold the drift? Well, and if we want to drift, first thing we have to say is uh, tell the car we want to drift. And then we change the programs of the control unit that will allow us to, to, to slide the car, will allow us to wheel spin. We will have to be a bit more aggressive. We will use more of the power of the car. Just do the opposite I was just saying um, one minute ago. Try to play with the weight of the car and then you will see that with the Ateca we can have a lot of fun in the snow. Awesome. So I want to go try it out. Let's go. Let's go. So we go. See, we play with the throttle to make the slides really long. We try to anticipate a little bit. And be smooth with the throttle once we have the car sliding. And especially in places like this one that is very icy, here we have to be a bit more careful. We can throw the car up into the distance and it really moves a lot, moves well, but always thinking what's coming next. See, it's good fun, good anticipation. So now it's your turn to do the same thing. Of course I can never <laughs> do it the way you did it, but let me give it my best shot. Let's see what happens. The guy there. Exactly, he's the reference. Okay. Off the floor. Exactly. Oh. Inside. One. Look on the exit. Okay. You dissipate. Good one. Up. No, this oh, way. Uh, anyway, we should go up here. Okay. Through this door. And inside again. Quite well. Here is okay. where the ice is, so you have to give some time to the car because it's going to go really sliding. Okay. Keep going, keep going, perfect. All right. You, you took it well. Okay. So this is the no, ice. A bit, yeah, but a bit oh, okay. too much. Uh, All right, too much steer. You have to think that, uh, that things happen a bit slower on the, okay. uh, on the snow and on the ice. So now I can throw it down yeah, this way? Exactly. If you lift, you go inside. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, but it was good. Uh, good anticipation this time. Eh? Okay. Very nice. So it's a matter of getting this feeling, how much yep. power you need to give mm -hmm. to make the slide smooth and long. If you are really aggressive and very aggressive to the steering wheel, when the rear end comes, mm -hmm. then it's a bit more difficult to stop. Yeah. Also, so, the, the diesel engine, you have to get it revved up a little bit more bit, than perhaps yeah. the petrol. Because of the torque comes. Yeah, the torque comes much later. Yeah. But that was pretty so, interesting. Well, yeah. You see, it's good. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure.
Okay, so now let's test the traction. We're gonna go up this really steep hill. I know it's a bit difficult for you to see on the camera, but trust me, it's really, really steep. And then we're gonna come back down the same hill as well. So I have it in off-road mode with the hill descent control on. So let's see how it goes. Gotta give a little bit of power so that the traction control system has more power to play with and use. And again, with the Haldex system, it channels the power to the wheel, which has the most amount of traction, and it's making cake work out of this incredibly steep hill. And remember, there's so much of snow. And voila, we made it to the top without a fuss. Now we go back down, and wow, it's really steep. I can't even see the bottom of the hill. So I'm gonna come to a complete stop, let the hill descent control take its uh, own time to inch slowly down the hill. So the eye system is activated. I have a symbol that shows me that. My feet are completely off both the pedals. Uh, it's applying the brake using engine brake by itself. Struggling to find traction. Somehow managing to do so a little bit. Losing a bit of grip. But overall, you know, I'm coming down at a very steady pace and smooth as it goes. So the system really works and I think it's a win. So we had a great day here in uh, Austria driving the Seat Ateca in the snow. We got to take it off road on a snow track and see how it behaves there with its snow uh, mode and the all wheel drive. We got to throw it around in the drift circuit with a professional driver. And overall, I'm really impressed with this car. It can be what you want it to be. If you want to just have it as an urban runabout, you can spec the front wheel drive, have one of the Ecomotive engines, and it costs you just about 20,000 euros. If you want something a little bit more capable, something a little bit with, uh, with a little bit more power, then you can spec what we have here with the two liter diesel and 190 horsepower and four wheel drive. So all in all, it's a great package. So let us know what you feel about this car and put your comments in the section below.